Julian Assange was granted permission to appeal his extradition to the United States. This case has huge implications regarding free speech and freedom of the press as we have the United States charging an Australian journalist with the Espionage Act for exposing their war crimes. In every step of the way, this has been a glorified show trial to justify the persecution of Julian Assange. Did you guys know it's against UK law for them to extradite someone to a country where they know they won't get a fair trial and the country wants them dead? How about the CIA under Mike Pompeo and Donald Trump drawing up plans to assassinate Julian Assange? And in this trial, the evidence of the CIA plotting to kill Julian Assange wasn't allowed to be presented. You would think that this is important to the case, right? But no, the UK court was like, the CIA wanting to kill Julian Assange has nothing to do with Julian Assange's safety. Yes, that's an argument that the high court made with a straight face. Another argument the high court made with a straight face is that they said the United States robbed Julian Assange of his freedom of expression and won't be able to give him a fair trial. But uh, we're still going to extradite him anyway if you can provide safety assurances. Don't forget, the case against Julian Assange completely fell apart when a key witness used by the State Department admitted he lied in order to get immunity. We also had the CIA that was illegally spying on Julian Assange and his lawyers, which robbed him of his attorney-client privilege. Despite all the holes in the Julian Assange case, and the chilling implication for freedom of the press, you have the high court that essentially said that they're down to extradite them to the United States as long as the United States don't give them the death penalty. The Julian Assange case exposes the West more than any other. We have war criminals that are not in prison, but they are spending their time going after the person who exposed their crime. What's poppin'? We got another banger with you guys today. Y'all my friend Misty today. We gotta have a rant session today. One of my favorite guests, like, of, like, period. <laughs> that oh. So, of course, I had to hit my good friend, Comrade Misty. Uh, Misty <laughs> Winston. Thank you for joining our show once again. Who's, if you guys are not familiar, great, uh, I will call you a journalist, great journalist, great mm -hmm. activist, um, great organizer as well. So, thank you for joining me on RBN. Uh, the very humble Misty. So I gotta brag for Misty because she won't brag. Thank well, listen, so I'll take activist. I'll take that. But I, journalist always makes me a little bit uncomfortable. Um, I think just because I have such a great respect for journalists that it feels very strange to put myself in that category. I think I'm just a commentator, really. Um, yeah. but, I mean, and I will, just titles and labels. Don't really yeah, mean. it's whatever. But I will take activist, hundred percent. I'm very proud of my activism. So yes, yeah, I will take. I that. say journalist just because you have a. a you're a host on the radio show. You you organize a lot of activists. Well, I think it's a legitimate journalist. Yeah. Journalism. Because yeah, the establishment, no. the establishment will call you a journalist if you interview a politician and give them a tongue bath interview. They're yeah, like, that's true. Look, look at those people that's at Meet true. the Press. They're esteemed journalists. <laughs> I view people who interview <laughs> activists. Yeah, and like breaking ground ground stories, way more legitimate than people who just interview politicians. You know what I mean? Yeah, so even though you're very humble, I do think you're more legit than most. Well, I thank you. And listen, if Chuck Todd can call himself an honest journalist, then surely <laughs> I can, right? Like surely that that would apply to me too, right? Chuck I mean, Todd. yeah, now, Chuck fucking Todd. I'm not, not, I'm not like a I'm not a Postal Prize winning journalist. I'm not saying I broke many stories. Uh, I I shared stories. That people would have not not have known otherwise. I break this. I broke the story about the uh, Casey Tenet Union developing. Yeah, when, it was going to happen anyway. But that's the that's the nature of journalism. Something going to happen, and then you spread yeah. the word of the of what of what's happening. Who now said, when I, I shared that, it went. That, somebody ahead. said that the definition of journalism is just looking outside and reporting back what you see. So yeah, I mean, I in a way, little, we are all journalists. I mean, all of us. Yeah, you tweet, you're a journalist. Me, I explained this many times before. Like I have a very low bar for journalism, uh, <laughs> and because like it it doesn't it serves us because yeah. even if you do bad journalism, I'd be like, oh, that's a bad journalist. The same way there's good basketball players and bad basketball players. Yeah. If you see someone who's a bad basketball player, you're like, oh, he's not playing basketball. Yeah, he's he's playing basketball. He's just not good at it. Right. You know I mean, that's how good journalism. <laughs> who's not good at journalism? That makes sense. That makes sense. Just because like you're that. not not because just because you're not Glenn fucking Glenn Greenwald. Just because yeah. you're not fucking 
Julian Assange don't mean you're not a journalist. Just because you're not yeah, a senior yeah. or That's just fair. Because you're not LeBron. Like, for example, if you're playing basketball, just because you're not fucking Sky Jordan, <laughs> don't mean you're That's not playing basketball. That's a good point, actually. I am, like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I just... Um, I understand your point, too, because you like, I got respect for all those great... Like, I see people like should. Vanessa Bealy, who literally lives in Syria, like, under threat yeah. of danger at all times. And we and can I'm separate like, that. And yeah. my point of view is we can separate the levels of journalism. Sure. But it doesn't That's serve why I like to just say I'm a commentator. I think that kind of yeah. falls under the umbrella. You know what I mean? So me, um, me more, personally, I'm like, my work my work uh, stands for itself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I would much I'm, prefer people call me an activist, though, honestly. Yeah. yeah. That's more fitting, in my opinion. Either way. Although I've been kind of quiet for a while. Why, like, you were the number one call today. I mean, I'm we're going to have a nice short rant session today. I know you're pretty tired. <laughs> it's been a long day. There's a reason why when Julian Assange shit happens, people are like, we got here for Misty Winston. <laughs> you got billboards up. You organize, like, legitimate. I'm, I'm looking about at billboards big- again. I want to get a billboard in D.C. That's going to be very pricey, though, and I don't know if I can fundraise for that because that's people are having a hard time, and I'm terrible at fundraising. I hate asking for money, but I would love to get a billboard in D.C. calling out the Biden administration. Do you know what I mean? Like flat out. I don't know if anybody, if any billboard company would do it, but I would love that. Would that I would love that. But they you are pricey. The, you guys know I'm the hype man of RBN, right? I, <laughs> people don't like to brag about themselves, so I do it for them. Yeah, like, you do brag for me a lot. Misty legitimately organized large Julian Assange protests and rallies. Like that's and there's a reason why people reach out to you. And that, yeah. it was this like your third I'm or fourth show you did today. <laughs> yeah, it's a fourth. I'm just honestly, and I say this all the time. Listen, I get why people attach me to the Assange stuff because I am incredibly loud. I understand that. I am arguably, I would say, the loudest Assange person. Um, But that doesn't necessarily mean I'm doing the most. Like, there are people on the ground, for example, in London. They're in the streets. No, I know. But I'm just like, it's I, 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 I don't want people to give me too much credit and ignore the people who have been on the ground and who are on the ground religiously. I mean, like I said, in London, Wednesday and Saturday, there are multiple events taking place. They're going to the Australia house. Um, they're going to, uh, um, uh, Oh, what's it called? Um, Oh, I'm totally blanking on the little circle thing. Fuck my life. I hate when I do that. Um, but also they, they go to Belmarsh. Um, it'll come to me or somebody in the chat will, uh, will have it but um uh they do stuff all the time rain shine during covid like they were being chased around the streets that was when the uk was like you have if you can't go outside unless you're like exercising so they would like jog through the streets away from the cops pretending to exercise so that they could cover the assange stuff for us when we were uh, doing a for a stuff in the states so there's just there's just a lot of people doing amazing work and i don't it makes me uncomfortable when i get too much attention now, and to, that point, people, to that point though that's the reason why I give you props because Julian Assange would already be dead if it wasn't for the overall movement. The yes. same, the same reason why the UN is forced to have a ceasefire. There is no way that would ever happen if it wasn't for the uh, the Palestinian organizers. You guys see who I give credit to? Yeah, I give even if it's if you're just one one uh, drop of an ocean of activists. We need that drop. It's always <laughs> we, activists. And the reason oh, why I do it, oh, there's there's a CIA op, and you know this as well. We talk about it many times as well. A coordinated effort to depower activists. Mm-hmm. Oh, what's the point? Oh, you look at you, Misty. You think you're the shit, Misty. Look at Nick. You, Nick think he the next Malcolm X. Who the fuck these people think they are? And I'm asking you guys, what is the benefit of that energy? The only thing that does is turn people off of activism. And I have seen it ever since I got into this space. Ever yes. since I became an activist, ever since I engaged in mutual aid, it is not, and it comes, it's come mostly from the, the professional managerial class, my friends. It's these people that always want to downplay what the fuck you're doing. Oh, look at RBN. You guys started mutual aid chapter. What the fuck you think you would accomplish? Guys, what is the point of that? You see it all the comments every once in a while. We leave them up. We leave them up because, like, I'm going to show you guys these haters. Yeah. And show you guys the counter revolutionary mindset. That goes on in the movement where people imagine are, oh, if instead you, of you, bitching, you, 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 
Go ahead, go ahead, Misty, go ahead. No, imagine if instead of bitching about what you guys are doing or not doing, what you're accomplishing or not accomplishing, imagine if they went and did something too. Like, it, what exactly. What if they just went and did, like, that's, uh, I get I get that energy all the time. And especially people will come to me and be like, oh, you're so focused on Assange, you don't talk about anything else. First of all, demonstrably false. I talk about lots of things. It's not even um, true, I, yeah, yeah. It, I, that's not even almost true. But secondly, it's, it's such a bizarre thing to me because in, in my act, Activists, I want people who are a little obsessive. I want people who are passionate right, as well. We got it wrong. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, that's you have to be to. I mean, especially. I mean, I don't want to like again make it a competition, but uh, just from my own personal experience, because uh, it's free speech stuff has basically been. I mean, I've been to Palestine rallies, but myself actually organizing stuff and being fully entrenched. That's really the, my biggest thing has always been. Um, but it's, I mean, it just, it blows my mind that, that people can't recognize that, um, that you can do multiple things. But I mean, I've, it, it, it I don't know. All of it just, it, it's so frustrating to me because people act as if, um, if you only talk about one thing, you don't care about anything else. Or if you're, if you talk about one thing a we lot, need then those specialists. I like, don't there, stop there policing people. me, stop policing what I'm talking. Listen, because I get it a lot with Mumia. People try to throw that in my face for some reason. Oh, you talk about Assange, but you don't talk about Mumia. Listen, you're absolutely right. You, Mumia does not do get that. enough attention. I do. I do. Uh, yes, absolutely. you're right. No, I have, but he doesn't get enough attention. Neither does Leonard Peltier. Neither did Daniel Hale. I mean, he's now out on house arrest, but there's a whole host of issues that don't get enough attention. Stop yelling people at me. Don't, people don't cover the P Pendleton, too. Yes. I have my, I had two black on. We covered the Pendleton, too. Like, you know how long we go down the rabbit hole? We're like, oh, you don't cover this. You don't cover this. There's don't talk so about many this. things. I'm one person. That, I could play that card. I could play the card. Why don't you? I could go to every single person. I did a string about the Pendleton, too. Why did you cover the Pendleton, too? You know what I, I mean? Like, it yes. never ends. You know what I mean? Yes. But go ahead, Misty, finish your point. No, I just, I'm just, I'm only one person. I don't know, like, is that supposed to be some gotcha that you don't talk about all of the things I think are important? Well, you're sitting here talking to me about the things I do or do not talk about. What if you just went and called attention to these things? I, most of the people who come right. at me like that, they don't That's do shit. Go do something. Shut the fuck up and go do something. Like, stop following me around being angry about what I tweet. I'm a nobody. Go do something. Be productive. You know? Yeah. That's the kind of revolutionary forces. It's gonna be one of those nights, my friend. Yeah. Now let's get to I'm our first up. story. Let's yeah. get to the first story of the day. Um, and I want to hear your oh. your opinion on this because in my hotspot video, can I correct you? Yeah, go ahead. I will. Okay. I, I would love to hear a correction. Yeah. Yeah. He was not approved. The request for appeal was not approved. He was not granted permission to appeal. This is basically a delay of that decision. Um, and essentially, what they're saying is that they, th the two judges who are overseeing, who oversaw these hearings, the day X hearings that were on February twentieth and twenty first, uh, their position is that they think that he has um uh cause to uh, uh, appeal on three counts so those three counts have really <laughs> that nothing to do with the the plots to assassinate him nothing to do with the spying operation none of that stuff is being allowed to be uh submitted into court but the three points that they're uh, arguing that he has cause to appeal is he won't face a death penalty uh he won't be discriminated against due, due to his nationality and will be granted the same first amendment rights as u.s citizens and will be permitted to rely on first amendment so basically he's not going to be um uh, uh treated differently than an american on the first amendment issue and so he will be permitted to rely on that as a as a argument in court which is bullshit so they're asking what essentially what today was this was they were just saying um we think he has right to appeal on these three counts. Hey, U.S. government, if you would like to offer us some assurances that assurances that address these three issues, then we will have a new hearing on May 20th and we'll make a decision based on the information that we've acquired. So the U.S. government has until April 16th to present their assurances, which really, I mean, y'all. Okay, I have so much to say, Nick, and I'm sorry. I am so no, this is what the show is for. because this is um, it, the the stuff about the do you want to hear what they said about the uh, the kidnap and assassination plots? Because this is uh, it's an incredible paragraph. It's a little lengthy, but I do read fast. So we'll get through it quickly. But this feel is free. if you want me to share anything, feel free to put it in a private chat and I can share. On the screen, okay. But go ahead and um, it. Sorry, I am fired up today, guys. I'm going to apologize a million times. It's going to be one I'm of those very, nights, my friend. It is going to be one of those nights. I just I always feel bad because I feel like I'm taking over the show and I'm talking to much but i am genuinely oh, go ahead, go ahead. i have a lot of information to give to you and i mean 
less importantly, what I think about it. You can make up your own mind, but Take your time, um, my friend. Take I time. just need to vent. Um, but yeah, I'll sh I'll send this to you so you can show people too, because some people just like to read along. Also, I'm sorry. Yeah, I put anything you want on the screen in the in the chat, and I'll put okay. it. Okay, I'm putting. It's just a tweet of mine, so it's very easy um, to pull up. Um, but so this is the paragraph. <laughs> This is the paragraph, it's uh, paragraph 210 in this decision that, or not decision, This I don't even know what it is. It's not a decision. It's a non-decision decision. decision. Uh, they say, again, let me uh, give you a little bit of context. This is about the plots to either kidnap or assassinate Julian Assange that were developed sometime in maybe 2017-ish by Mike Pompeo, director of the CIA, um, uh, amongst the, uh, the highest levels of the Trump administration, which I would venture to say that that means Trump was pretty heavily involved or at least had knowledge of it. Um, uh, and uh, so there was plots to do all of that stuff. And this is the, the uh, Assange defense team attempted to uh, enter that into court on the in the February court dates. This is their response to whether or not that information justifies an appeal. So this is what they say. The judge did not reject the evidence that the applicant had ad adduced to similar effect as untrue and the original allegations were, by some margin, serious enough to bar extradition if the alleged misconduct was in any way connected to the extradition proceedings. The judge's critical finding, however, is that there was nothing to show that the conduct in relation to the embassy was connected to the extradition proceedings. So basically what they're saying is they weren't trying trying to kill you with some because of something related to the extradition proceeding so it's fine like it, it's not related to this case they i mean yes they were trying to kill you but you know big whoop de doo right um so uh, the new evidence this is, is why not I call it a show trial you can continue missy but this is yeah. exactly yes. why i call it a show trial this it's is a just joke. a sign to give uh, the illusion that Julian Assange is given a fair trial like this i mean this is for the sur the surface level dummies like you know, like the TYT, the people who think the CIA is, is good yeah. now. Yeah. Like they're the people that will read it. Like, see, they're giving Julian Assange a fair trial. Like these, this is designed <laughs> for the dummies and yes. for the dummies spread propaganda. But go ahead and continue. Your yes. amazing coverage, Missy. Go ahead. So they just continue. The new evidence does not change that. On the face of the allegations, on the evidence before the judge, and the fresh evidence, the fresh evidence being the uh, allegations um, and evidence supporting the allegations of. Uh, the assassination plots and all of that good stuff. Um, so uh, the contemplation of extreme measures against the applicant, whether poisoning, for example, or rendition, they're literally just talking about, yeah, they were trying, they were talking about poisoning you or, you know, rendition, no big deal, uh, <laughs> were a response to the fear that the applicant might flee to Russia. So that's justified. You're justified. He was going to flee to Russia. You obviously have to poison him, despite the fact that he is locked up in the Ecuadorian embassy. He cannot go anywhere. If he steps outside, he will be arrested and extradited. So what the fuck are you talking about? There was no threat whatsoever that he was going to rush off to Russia somehow. It's absurd. Uh, the short answer to this is that the rationale for such conduct is removed if the applicant is extradited. Ready? Extradition would result in him being lawfully in the custody of the United States authorities. And the reasons, if they can be called that, like that's up for debate. There's no <laughs> reason for kidnapping or renditioning somebody. So, and the reason. And I just want to interject real quick, and now that you continue, you yeah. guys see how the legal system in the West, in the UK, and the United States is meant to insult our intelligence. This is absurd. They insult our, our intelligence while doing extremely illegal and highly uh, unethical things. It's gaslight lighting on on a high level. You know, I had to, I had to chime in every once in a while, but you on fire, my friend. Let, uh, go ahead and continue, Miss. No, I'm sorry. I am going no, to no, genuinely no, no, try to like reel it in, but I'm just pissed. This, the, to just to complete this, because this sentence is extraordinary. Uh, it continues in the reasons if they can be called that ridiculous for rendition or kidnap or assassination then fall away so if we just extradite you then you will be lawfully in the custody of the people who were plotting to assassinate you so then obviously um the reasons for the kidnap or assassination attempts that just falls away no, they're not going to kill you now they're, you're lawfully detained what the fuck are you talking about what this is in a piece of legal documentation regarding the most significant court case on press freedom arguably in history <laughs> and this is they're just oh, like yeah. so they so were plotting to assassinate you if you just are extradited it's fine they're not going to kill you what the fuck is happening you have cia oh. officials under trump discuss assassinating julian assange and you had that coward tucker carlson oh. who had trump in front of him you have all these cowards who are interviewing donald trump and never bring this up never you know that? Never. 
Tucker Carlson sat directly across from Donald J. Trump. Tucker Carlson, Assange supporter, right? And listen, I will give credit where it's due. In the week before Trump left office, Tucker Carlson did a show every single night of his five nights on air that week. And, and he did a segment dedicated to um, lobbying uh, Trump to pardon Assange. And he gets credit for that. Fine, whatever. Um, I'm glad that he, uh, you know, changed it. Whether he's legit and like, I don't think he is. I think he's a... Uh, I he's a partisan he's hack. We don't have he's respect got for partisan hack. And I, I, yeah. I, I told people that I take things issue by issue. And on yeah. the issue I agree with Tucker on, I'll be on the side on that issue, like yeah. the Ukraine war. That doesn't change my assessment that he's a partisan hack. He's yeah. getting he getting th those issues right in order to trick people into thinking Trump is the solution. I have yes. seen so many times of him fucking boot looking for Trump, and he's talking about an issue that Trump caused. Trump armed Ukrainian rebels. Yeah. Trump. Uh, tried to kill Julian Assange. Yeah. And all these Trump supporters are like, oh man, I support Julian Assange. It means nothing. Yes. Can my Trump supporting friends, and yes, I have them, get pissed about it. I don't care. Um, uh, it, they, uh, it's very frustrating to me because I, generally speaking, and this is very sad to me, I it, Trump supporters support Assange more than a lot of leftists do, which is oh, very... No, le leftists are horrible on this issue. Leftists yeah. hate Julian Assange for I don't know what reason. I've had multiple communists tell me, online commies, uh, tell me that they don't care about Assange because he's not a communist, as if it's about him. It has nothing to do with him. <laughs> it, 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 no, I don't either. But yeah, it's mm -hmm. um the idea that Trump supporters, uh, and it, again, generally speaking, speaking, they are supporters of Assange. I think that has a lot to do with the release of Hillary Clinton's emails that obviously, and unfortunately, that's just the reality of it, that kind of team mentality where, oh, Julian Assange did something that helps my team. So now I like him because in 2010, they hated him. Um, they couldn't stand him. And liberals were giving him a standing ovation. And now it's the reverse. Um, and so, uh, but, but Trump supporters are so willing to turn a blind eye or even just like pretend that the reality doesn't exist, that it was under Donald, they'll, they'll try to make all kinds of excuses about how, oh, well, he just, he surrounded himself with the wrong people and they, you know, that he didn't, he didn't know, he knows now. He's not an idiot. He dug under the swamp to find the likes of Mike Pompeo and Jeff Sessions and Mad Dog Mattis. And are you joking? Gina Haspel? Like, really? And if, like, oh. And if, if he's not either smart enough, or bold enough to say, yes. hey, guys, don't hire those those people. He's not the solution. No, he's not. Oh, come on, man. Trump could do anything. He was powerless against the then why you support him then? If right? It, What's the point? Oh, what is the point? But also, uh, sorry, I got sidetracked, but in 2011, he's on camera being asked by uh, uh, Jeff Kilmeade, I think is his name, from Fox and Friends back in the day. Uh, this was soon after like the Iraq and Afghanistan war logs came out and all of that stuff. And the guy, Je uh, Kilmeade, Brian, I think, Brian Kilmeade, um, asked him you know, what he thought about WikiLeaks. And uh, Trump said something, what did he call it? uh disgusting or despicable maybe something like that and then he said i think and i quote i think there should be the death penalty or something about julian assange in yeah. 2011 long before he ever ran for office or surrounded himself with the people like mike pompeo so this is not a new position for trump he has never been a fan of press freedom and in fact while he was president he uh lobbied for the idea that we could put journalists in jail so that we can squeeze them for their sources this and is not really <laughs> I'm gonna have a lot of fun with MAGA people, especially because I think Trump is gonna win. I'm gonna have a oh, lot I of fun so. with them. I think that's the um, plan. Because they, I think, and there are a lot of MAGA people who follow me. I figured like mm -hmm. they view my criticism of Democrats more enjoyable, <laughs> and and they willing to, they okay with me uh, bashing capitalism, <laughs> calling myself yeah. a communism, a communist, saying Israel doesn't deserve to this. They okay with all that as long as I bash Democrats, but yeah. they're gonna be very uncomfortable. Uh, as I continue to call it, the fact that their movement is ineffective. They keep saying stuff like, well, I, I support Julian Assange. There's nothing that Trump can really do about it. They he can't do everything. They could kill him. That's the same argument that black people used to make about Obama to me. Where they yeah. like, come on, man, Obama can't do all that stuff. They'll kill him. And I used to respond, what's the point then? Well, and that is <laughs> the point. That's the point. No, there is no, like, savior. There's no one single exactly. person that's going to be able to overcome what needs to be overcome. This is not like you insert some guy into some meaningless position and all everything is better. That's not what this is, y'all. We're way too deep for you. Seriously, y'all still think you can vote your way out of this? What, pla like, what planet are you on? 
I'm some, just, oh, I'm so frustrated with that right now. I think it's just because we're, listen, I'm sorry. If you are still an electoral you, you, politics person, I don't mean to offend because I get it. We're all on our own journey. However, I am so exhausted <laughs> with people thinking that we can just vote our way out of this. Like every two to four years, we can just go push a button and that's going to fix a goddamn thing. Nothing. If it, it fixes. And in fact, things just continue to deteriorate as you all uh, pretend like. <laughs> Trump's yeah, gonna fix really it. I, or, saw you, I saw your response to uh, Tucker. This is and you can give props for Tucker for bringing up Julian Assange and have. Yes, my but I can also call him out when I think it's necessary. I'm sorry. Absolutely. Yeah, that's exactly why, that's exactly my point. You can you can say, oh man, good thing I'm glad he brought Julian Assange, but. <laughs> I, I get I shit for that it. all the time because <laughs> I'll give somebody credit where it's due. And like Kennedy, Robert Kennedy Jr. I can't stand the guy. He supports genocide. He hangs out with Rabbi Schmuckface. He is a, an <laughs> abhorrent human being to run around. The lies that he spews about Palestine is disgusting. I do not like him, but he stands for Julian Assange too. Welcome aboard, my guy. Thanks. Appreciate your help. Yeah. So th it was, this is my problem. I can. Have I get shit for it all the time. I can have two thoughts at once. Tucker says the fact that any of this is even a question is shocking. Not shocking. Biden is actually considering the death penalty for journalism. Yes, he is. Where are all the liberals at CNN, NBC News, and Washington Post? Totally shameful. Once again, we agree with He's you, right. brother. But and I, I read your reply because I saw I saw you dunk on them, and this is the point that we got to continue to make. Because you can you we can say, hey, good job, but the yes. but part is actually very important. Yes, because we are holding people accountable, even though they're getting it right. Because I used to do it uh, with Ukraine all the time. We both used to do it with Ukraine all the time. We'd be like, "Oh, you see through the war between tactics in Ukraine, but what about your position on China? Why can't yeah. you see through it with Israel and Taiwan?" You know, what I mean, it's very important when it comes to educating uh, and getting a uh, a very intelligent resistance, for the lack of a better term. So anyway, so let me re reply, and we can move on. Uh, you said, yes, and it was Trump who had him assassinate, arrested, spied on him, and developed plots to assassinate him. And then when you were sitting directly across from him, you didn't ask him a single question about any of it. Not one. And that's why I'm calling him out because, listen, I cannot, and I get it, I have a different perspective on this than Tucker Carlson, who's new to the party. Um, he's not been on the Assange front for very long. Uh, so I'm trying to give, like, that kind of grace. But, y'all, can you imagine sitting in front of Donald J. Trump being an Assange supporter and not asking a single solitary question about the things that he did to Julian Assange? What? Bro. What? No, you're how many one on one opportunities do you get to sit in front of Donald Trump? He doesn't speak to that many people one on one like that. You know what I mean? So, to I mean, Candace Owens asked him, he dodged the question, but Candace Owens has the balls to ask him. And Tucker Carlson just think about Misty. Why does Tucker get this this pass? Everyone in I independent don't get him media, <laughs> everyone in independent media has this pressure, and they are. They are shitted on, rightfully so, whenever they have someone with power and they give them a softball interview. It's something I was very careful with. And I'm proud to say that I did not give Cornell West a single softball interview. I asked him hard questions. I brought up things I disagree with, including his vote for Biden, including his language regarding Putin. Uh, we, we questioned him about the COVID narrative. These are all questions that he wasn't happy with. But we asked him those hard questions. These are things we were very careful, careful about doing because there's a lot of pressure because a lot of people who fail this test, you know, the Marion Wilson gang, where that they gave the people softball interview, the RFK gang gave him softball interviews, and mm -hmm. all these people rightfully get called out in independent media if you give softball interviews, except Tucker for some reason. And I and noticed he gives that softball so interviews. many. Even like, Putin, like, like he was, like that was soft as fuck, my guy. You're sitting across from Vladimir Putin, and that. I don't know. And listen, I, again, I'm not a journalist. I don't know what I would ask Vladimir Putin. I would probably embarrass myself because I'm awkward and my uh, uh, my brain works too fast. And sometimes I say stupid things because my I'm ju it just all comes so quickly. So I would probably make a fool of myself. So listen, I'm not claiming I'm doing any better. But if you're Tucker Carlson and you have decades of being a guy that interviews people and you go and you interview the likes of Vladimir Putin and you give a softball and like that's just... What's the point? I think, it was a, I think it was a few months ago. I called it out when uh, when Tucker gave the salt bar interview. I literally did a whole topic segment on it. Yeah. Because I'm like, why is this guy allowed to get away with this? He does this all the fucking time. Mm -hmm. He does this all the time. 
Uh, but anyway, I want to ask you about one more question about Assange, and then we quickly move on. I want to ask you about. I hope I explained um, everything okay earlier. No, perfect. I always doubt myself. Perfect. I just want to make sure people understand what's happening, what's going on. Yeah, I have one question convoluted. because it's something I was looking up when I was doing my research on the hotspot. Um, so I'm glad you corrected that because I saw a lot of people say that he, she got directed in a lot. Like this stuff with Julian Sons always confusing. I do a lot of people saying, oh, he got permission to appeal, whatever. I want to ask you about the extradition law because I mm -hmm. looked at this. I was like, I need to find evidence. And I think I, I, I put a clip in this my hotspot video where I found extradition law regarding how in the UK it's like illegal to, to extradite someone to a country where death is assured. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're, you're, you know more on this issue than I do. So can you expound on the extra, extradition law if you can? There's a whole UK? host of reasons why they're supposed to not extradite somebody. The death penalty is one of them. Another one is a political prisoner. I don't know if there's ever been a mere, more clear cut case of a political prisoner in my life. Uh, it, I, it's very bizarre to me that anybody would question that this is 100. And in fact, uh, but I think part of what Stella said in her speech uh, earlier today was that um, it's very telling when they claim that this is not a political case, but then in today's hearing or whatever it was, um, they sent it back to the United States for a political response, offering governmental assurances. <laughs> so it is political like it's it's just it it blows my mind it, so yeah there's a whole host of reasons why uh that the uk and the u.s extradition treaty uh there's a whole host of reasons in there why you cannot extradite somebody julian ticks several of those boxes um and so the idea that um uh and that's what a lot of my uh my uk friends have been talking about like this is an embarrassment on so many levels for them too because it has been made abundantly clear that they are nothing more than a bitch state for the u.s and they will do whatever the United States wants them to do, no questions asked. Uh, and it is just, um, it's so, and same with Australia. Uh, it's been made readily apparent and it really was before, but I think that now we have like, it, it could not be more obvious. Um, so I don't, I'm kind of rambling here, but yeah, the, extra, the extradition treaty, there's just uh, a whole host of reasons why you can't extradite somebody. And yes, the idea that um, Julian Assange would almost certainly be um, uh, epstein or uh, that he would just die himself. Uh, he, he's been in poor health for a very long time. Uh, he's had a mini stroke, which is almost always a precursor to something more serious happening. Um, so yeah, uh, there's no there's no reason. For, forget all that, they have no case. Like the idea that we're even talking about extraditions and appeals is ridiculous. There's no case. One, one of the most disgusting things about this case and you know how you know it's a show trial designed to kill Julian Assange is how the judges in this case are dismissive and completely ignoring the psychological torture that Julian Assange is going through. If this, if this was anyone, and I would say in a non-political case, to be to be safe, if this was anyone in a non-political case, the psychological trauma that Julian Assange is going through would have been addressed by the judges in the court a long time ago. It's so blatantly it was. Go, go ahead, Miss Gout, if you want to try It in. kind of was. Um, uh, that is part of the reason why District Judge Vanessa Baratzer in 2020, on January 4th, ruled against the initial extradition order because uh, really just on the two grounds that Julian Assange's mental health was in poor condition and also based on the atrocious um, uh, conditions of the United States prison system. So th that was the only two reasons why she did not extradite him because it was apparent even then that he and this is i mean uh, so that was 2020 so he was mm, not quite a year into belmarsh but he was i mean a decade into illegal and arbitrary detention he had been in the ecuadorian embassy for years devoid of natural sunlight not able to seek regular medical care he had dental issues he wasn't getting proper nutrition all of those things so he had been deteriorating for you know a, a significant amount of time um and yeah it's it's just um it's absurd. Like, honestly, it, like when I talk about it out loud, I sound like a crazy person because it's so absurd when you actually look at the reality of the situation uh, that it it would be laughable if it weren't also true. Like it weren't actually happening. It's insane. Sorry. I think you're muted. Is, is there, yeah. Is there any final thoughts that you have? There's just a, a few quick topics that's similar 
uh, that I will move on on. But is there any final thoughts you have? Um, let me think. Okay, so yes, really quickly, I'll just get through some of the stuff that obviously will be coming up and coming out of this. There are some pop-up protests happening in uh, various different locations. I think that London has one tomorrow, or maybe that's Australia. That might be Sydney. Um, but just if you get on uh, Twitter or whatever, um, you can go to Candles for Assange. It's the number four. That's my friend Alex Hill. She tries to collect all of the global actions. The pop-up ones, I don't know if she'll be able to get quite a handle on all of those because they're happening rather rapidly. Um, but uh, she will have any of the uh, other dates that I'll be talking about in just a second. But if you can find a pop-up event near you, go to it, raise awareness about it. There's obviously going to be some in London. I'm sure there will be some in DC. Um, they do regular protests outside of Merrick Garland's house anyway. So I imagine that that will be a thing. Um, but also the other protests that I mentioned. So there's numerous important dates coming up. Obviously, April 11th is can't believe I'm saying this out loud, the five-year anniversary of Julian Assange being kidnapped and stuffed away into Belmarsh Prison. Five years, like that's just insane that that's a thing that is happening. Uh, so obviously there will be events taking place um, on or around April 11th all across the globe. Um, so again, go to Candles for Assange for that. Uh, May 3rd is World Press Freedom Day. So get ready for some really hypocritical tweets from the likes of Antony Blinken and Kamala Harris. Those are always fun. Um, but there will be events taking place for that. Again, I don't know when and where these will be. These are groups all across the country that just always do stuff. Um, the Assange movement is incredibly active, still relatively small, uh, unfortunately, but incredibly active. Um, so that's all very important. Make sure if you can make it to an event, you do, because we need that mass public pressure. But also if you're in the states um there is house resolution 934 um h res 934 so this is the uh, very very first piece of bipartisan legislation um that is calling for the protection of regular journalistic activities and also dropping of the case against julian assange and as an assange activist who's been very like into this stuff the idea that we have bipartisan legislation in the house of representatives that even mentions julian assange by name is incredible to me i Two years ago, I would have thought that that was impossible. So that's huge. Um, but we need more co-sponsors so that it will be forced to be put to a vote. So call your House representatives. Listen, and you guys know me. I'm very cynical about all of this stuff. But I feel like, especially with phone calls, calling your representative, super fucking easy. It takes two minutes. Um, so uh, call your representative. Encourage them to sign on to House Resolution 934. Um, and just, I mean, we just need as much pressure as possible. We need tweets. We need videos. We need articles to be shared. We need uh, calls to be made. We need protests to be had. We need people to actually, it's, it, it's um, the most confusing thing I've ever had to deal with that people don't care about this. I don't know. Maybe I, I, I just, I, it's hard for me. It, to me, this is the front line. It doesn't matter what you care about. You can't fight for it if you can't speak. And that's what this is. So um, it's, I don't know, I'm getting a little preachy about it. But yes, just call representatives about um, House Resolution 934, find protests near you. Um, and I think that's it.